Page 14, now is the hour. This piece is pretty straightforward. There's not a lot for me to discuss. I'm hoping you can pretty much just sit down and learn it fairly quickly. You know, just, I will point out a few minor little things and maybe make a few suggestions to you just in case. Let's start with the right hand. The first line there on page 14 is simple enough. However, you've been playing that A with the fourth finger there in the first line. I'm going to suggest you play the last note in the line, that quarter note A with third finger. So you can play the half note A, the first note in the second line with fourth finger. All I'm doing is trying to use different fingers on repeated notes most of the time. And this allows me to do that. The only other thing that I would suggest, I mean, you get this A, this fingering, this passage again, if I could say it, over on page 15, and I would use the same fingering there as that, is 3 4. Then the only other thing I have to talk about in right hand is the last note there at the bottom of page 15, that chord. That is arpeggio, it's got squiggly lines, so. And I will play the A, the first note of that, with the left hand F. For the left hand, I'm going to point out a few trickery things they've got going on here. Right at the beginning, you're fine. It's just a one chord in the first measure. And that second measure, look out. It's a one, and then a three one on the B flat D. So you can use a two on the D flat. And then it might throw a few people. You might want to try and use a thumb on the D flat, and I would discourage you from that. Please don't use second finger on D flat. In this case. On the second line, the last two measures. Now, if look at the first four notes there on the last two measures. You have an F, A, C, B flat, or E flat. This is a chord. Typically, I'd lock the fourth finger on the A because that's how chords are normally done. But we don't like the thumb on a black note. In this case, you're going to pretty much have to use a third finger on the A, just like they're showing you in the music. So go ahead and fing finger just like they've got it there in the music is fine. Third line down, first measure is okay. Fourth finger on the Second measure fifth finger on the B flat and then the B natural so you can use the fourth finger on the C. Last measure again you're going to use your thumb on the F and G together. Won't that be fun? Yay! Look at the last measure on page 14 leading into the first measure on page 15 in the left hand. They're showing this. It's doable, but it's awkward. We kind of like to let things lead into other things. It's like this goes to here. It's that feeling of motion. Because in the right hand you have here. And then at the top of 15 is the A. You're leaning into that. Go up to here. Even though in the music they've written it, break it. No. Mm, no. Connect them. Well, we'd like the left hand to sort of do that too. I mean, it's doing it here. Right? If I leave out the other notes, that's really the idea. That's what we would like to have. But we can't do that in the left hand very well with this fingering. It's, yeah. So you might experiment a little bit. and I don't know of a nice fingering that works here is the problem. I tried several things out, none of them work. But the closest thing came was to use the fourth finger at the top of page 15 instead of fifth finger. Instead of here, do here. Four, two, one on that first measure. And then you can go to five on the second measure. So it would be here. I can connect those, a little awkward, because I'm here, and I gotta get the fourth finger under it to go here. I 
can do that. It certainly is easier than fifth finger. So, so do the best you can with it. Uh, you can cheat a little bit if you want. Tell you how to cheat. And that is, since we're using pedal, put the pedal down on the third beat of that last measure and legato pedal it from then on. So it's here. And then you can finger just like they've got, doesn't matter. And that works too. Now if I were playing it, that's how I would do it. I would I would pedal the last beat of that last measure on page 14. Last two measures of the piece. They're at the bottom, the left hand still. This is a chord. It's an F major extended position chord. Use fourth finger on the A here, all right? Because that's fingering for that chord. So go ahead and do that. The fermata at the end, I'm going to hold for six counts. I double it when I play with a metronome is all it is. And you, when you're playing it, you just hold it how long you feel it should be held. As far as the pedaling goes, it's pretty much just do what they're telling you. It's fine. I like to hear a break between the phrases, but just pedal it the way they're doing it. It's overlapping pedal, except for a few measures, uh, like at the last measure of the second line on page 14 and page 15, same place, last measure, second line. You're lifting it up early so you don't smear those notes in the left hand. There's a couple minor little interpretive things I'd like to point out that you can experiment with and see what you think. This piece is just a real sweet piece, all right? It's a good piece to fall asleep to. When you get, I mean, they don't give you a lot in dynamics. So you're going to have to kind of feel it and experiment with dynamics and see what you think. Because you don't have to play it. They give you an MF at the beginning, and then there's nothing for the rest of the page. Duh. Uh, no, um, you you got to come up and down a little bit. So adjust your dynamic level. Feel it. Experiment with the words. How, how do you, when do you think that it should get a little louder and a little softer? Put your own interpretation in it. Don't play the whole thing at one dynamic level just because that's all they put in the music. Right? Uh -uh. This is an arrangement. It's not a classical piece where they put in all the dynamics for you. This is just an arrangement. They're giving you an idea. Starting out sort of medium loud, but you can get soft and loud and go up and down as you go through the piece. They do give you a crescendo on page 15 in the third line, so when you start that, come way down, start it soft, so as you get louder, Usually when we have these, there's like a climax to it. And here, the climax would be the B flat, the last measure of the third line there on page 15. And that's where you're after. And at the end, there's a diminuendo as you're going away. Now that arpeggiated chord at the end, not all arpeggiated chords are the same. All right. Some are played quickly, some are played very slowly. All right, it's still an arpeggiated code, chord, <laughs> code. It's up to you, it's an interpretive thing, but usually when you have a sweet piece like this and the arpeggiated chord is at the end, you will play it slowly. You will rock them very slowly. Not. It's out of character for the piece, right? So experiment with that and slow those those notes down a little bit. I don't know how fast. You, you decide how fast you want to play them. Just slow them down. Don't play them quickly. Melody's in the right hand. You want to bring out the melody. Even when you have multiple chords in the right hand, try and bring out the melody, which is the top note. Let's play this together slowly. It is a slow song, but we'll get an idea. You can check your notes, make sure you got all the right notes and all that. I'll give us three counts and let's play it together. So put your hands where they go and your foot's on the pedal and we're ready. One, ready, go.
I don't know if there's any recordings of this or not, but I think I would play it something like this.